गुड डे फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू द लेक्चर सीरीज ऑन म्यूचुअल फंड्स इन माई प्रीवियस लेक्चर्स ऑन म्यूचुअल फंड्स आई टॉक्ड अबाउट वॉट इज म्यूचुअल फंड वाई पीपल इन्वेस्ट थ्रू म्यूचुअल फंड्स वॉट आर द बेनिफिट्स ऑफ इन्वेस्टिंग थ्रू म्यूचुअल फंड्स वॉट इज द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ म्यूचुअल फंड्स हाउ म्यूचुअल फंड्स ऑपरेट हाउ म्यूचुअल फंड्स ऑपरेट वर्क एंड देन वी वर टॉकिंग अबाउट द डिफरेंट स्कीम्स which are being offered by the mutual fund and depending on the objective depending on the risk profile of the investors depending on the goal of the investors depending on the risk profile of the investors different types of schemes are being offered by the mutual fund houses in my previous lecture i talked in detail about the equity funds where the mutual fund offers the schemes which invest in equity shares there are different whole host of the equity funds just to name a few like large cap funds where the where the scheme in the, in the scheme the only large cap companies are being means investment is only in the large cap companies in the mid cap funds the investment is in the mid cap when i say mid cap large cap or small cap means it is on the base of market capitalization on any of the stock exchange that is either national stock exchange or the bombay stock exchange the bsc the companies are being categorized in the large cap small cap or mid cap right so the different schemes offer different type of funds some schemes offer in the large cap scheme offers in the large cap companies some scheme offers the investment in the mid cap and small cap and so on so forth similarly there is a multi cap funds where the the fund managers in can may invest in any of these type of companies whether it is small cap large cap or mid cap there are index funds where the mutual fund manager invest only in the index companies right there are elss schemes equity link saving schemes which are beneficial for the tax savers means those who want to invest in the mutual fund for tax purposes they normally invest in the elss so there are different types of the equity schemes that is being offered by the mutual fund houses there are sectoral funds means that in a particular sector of the industry of the com- of the economy the <coughs> mutual fund manager invest like for example it f- sector so in this scheme the mutual fund manager will be investing only in those companies which are related to technology related which are which are providing technology services right so there is these are called sectoral fund if it is a say steel sector fund so it means the com- the mutual fund will invest only in the steel sector all those companies which are in the steel sectors or those companies selected by the fund manager which are operating in the steel sector in which in that um, com- in those companies the investment will be made so these are sectoral funds friends today i'll be starting with debt funds debt funds means is a one type of scheme called debt funds in the debt funds the mutual fund manager invest mainly in the debt debt means fixed income securities and you should be very clear in your mind when we talk of debt fund it doesn't means there is a since it is a fixed income securities so it is risk free friends you should be very clear in your mind that even the debt the the bond prices keeps on fluctuating in the market depending on the rate of interest in the market depending on the risk profile of the company the even the value of the bonds also changes but the degree of change in the bond valuation is less as compared to the change in the value of equity shares so equity shares are considered as more risky class as compared to the bonds so those investors who want to who are not ready to take larger degree of risk they normally invest in bond funds right in the bond schemes i'll be talking in detail who in, who wants to invest or who would like to invest in the bond funds so let me talk of the different type of schemes that are being offered by the debt in the debt fund schemes <clears throat> on the basis of i mean structure i have already discussed this point there are different types of schemes like uh, open ended scheme closed ended scheme these are different types of schemes which we discussed in a previous lecture interval i mean equity or growth schemes income schemes hybrid funds solution oriented funds and the equity schemes large cap funds mid cap funds small cap funds multi cap funds sectoral funds index fund tax saving funds right 
and who should invest in the equity funds those who are ready to take high degree of risk those who have long term goals they are seeking capital appreciation the young investors and the market savvy investors these all things which we discussed in my previous lecture so these are some of the popular equity schemes like access long term equity fund mire assets emerging blue chip funds access blue chip fund this list is not exhaustive friends this is just to give you an idea that these schemes these are equity schemes which have given good return in the past kenra robeco equity diversified aditya birla sun life digital india fund access small cap fund and so on so forth now i am coming to the debt or income funds friends as i said just now debt or income funds are those funds those schemes in which the fund manager mainly invest in the debt in the bonds in the debt means fixed income securities one of the debt fund is called dynamic funds see dynamic fund in the dynamic fund fund manager actively manage the funds and depending on the market scenario mainly its investment will be in the debt bonds but it can also invest in the equity shares large proportion of the fund will be in the bonds and a small proportion can be in equity also the idea is to get a higher return for its investors because debt will give you a fixed income a fixed return and the equity will give you a changing return or a higher return normally it is being presumed that equity gives higher return than as compared to the bonds but the risk in the equity is larger so the idea is that depending on the level of the market if fund manager feels that market is low market is giving you a good opportunity to invest and it is a right time to invest in equity so some proportion of that that scheme is also being invested in equity and if the fund manager feels that the equity prices have gone up in the market it's very high the sensex or the nifty is high so at that point of time if the fund manager feels that it is risky to invest in equity then the fund manager will increase the exposure in the bonds that mainly investment will be in the bonds so dynamic funds the fund manager keeps on changing in the equity and debt but by and large basic investment will be in the bonds so through active and dynamic portfolio management dynamic bond funds seeks to maximize the return i have already explained how it maximizes the return means by investing some amount in the equity depending on the level of market when i am using the word level of market means whether the market is i mean at at the low level when i say low level or the high level it is being measured in terms of sensex and the nifty means the index of the bsc and the nsc right so uh, dynamic bond fund seeks to maximize the return to investors by switching up the investment portfolio depending on market conditions and fluctuation so this is called dynamic fund where the fund manager keeps on changing its investment in the bonds and the equity but mainly in the bonds other type of scheme is in the bond funds credit opportunity funds see in this credit opportunity fund these fund invest a minimum of 65% of investable corpus investable means the total funds available with the fund manager under in that scheme right 65% of the investable corpus in corporate bonds having rating below the highest quality corporate bonds see what is the highest quality different rating agencies rate these bonds like triple a double a single a so triple a uh, bonds are being considered as a high secured bonds means these are bonds of very good companies right so they are they are the degree of risk of failing to get the money back or interest right is very very low so these are called highly rated companies and these companies which have a high market standing these gets triple a rating so and in this fund a fund manager may not be investing its total fund in the triple a rated funds but less rated funds less rated bonds are also being invested so those investors who are ready to take a comparatively higher degree of risk they can invest in this credit opportunity funds so therefore these funds carry an amount of credit risk and offer slightly better returns than the highest quality bonds 
So, because since 65 percent of the fund is being invested in those bonds which are not highest quality bonds, a lesser quality. When I use the word lesser quality, it does not mean the, the junk bond or the poor quality bond, but less than the highest safety bonds, right. So, it gives certainly when you are ready to take higher risk, you should get higher return also. So, with this purpose, the bond manager offers the credit opportunity funds. Fixed maturity plan. See, under the fixed maturity plan, fund manager invest in those bonds and those debts which have a fixed maturity and which is not very far off, means for a shorter duration. So, fixed maturity plans are closed ended debt funds. These funds also invest in fixed income securities such as corporate bonds. Corporate bond means bonds issued by the companies, right? And government securities. All fixed maturity plans have a fixed horizon for which the money will be logged in means you are investing for 5 years, for 30 years, this is called fixed maturity plan. So, investment will be in the debt. <coughs> then comes liquid funds. Suppose you have a surplus fund and you invest, want to invest for 3 months, 4 months, 6 months, 1 year, right. So, means normally in these, the fund manager will keep on churning the portfolio, right. So, investor also want to invest for a shorter duration period of time. So, fund manager normally invest in those instruments which have a maturity of 90 days. You will say, I mean, you I, I was just saying that you want to invest for a year or like for 6 months and the fund manager will invest for 90 days. See, it is a continuous process. One, once the particular type of bond which is having a maturity of 90 days get redeemed, the other investment will continue. But in the liquid funds, the rate of return is comparatively less as compared to the other corporate bonds. So, fund managers, those who want to invest for a shorter duration for them and the degree of safety is higher in liquid funds. So, for them, this type of bond fund is being offered, right. The other is guilt fund. As you may be knowing it, the guilt fund means guilt edge securities are those securities which are highest, highest security level. Normally, the government securities are being considered as the guilt edge funds. So, guilt funds are mutual funds that invest only in government securities. They are preferred by risk averse and conservative investors. Risk averse means those investors who are not ready to, to take risk, right? And they, they, they want safety first even if their rate of return is low. So, those type of investors invest in guilt funds. So, now the question, we have talked about different types of debt funds. Now, the question is who should invest in debt funds? When I was talking of equity fund, I said those investors who are ready to take higher degree of risk, those who wants higher return, right, those who want to make investment for a very long period of time, they should invest in the equity funds. Now, I am saying those investors who are conservative investors, means those who are not ready to take high degree of risk, these type of investors should invest in debt funds because in these, the fluctuation in the price of bonds is is comparatively low as compared to equity. So, conservative investors prefer to invest in debt funds as compared to equity funds. Then, investors having short and medium term goals, right. So, equity funds are normally those investors who have a long term goals, they should invest in the equity funds. Those investors who have short term and medium term goals, they should invest in the debt fund. Investors seeking regular income because these investment bond funds gives you a fixed rate of interest, right. So, these bonds funds gives you a regular income. So, those who want to have a regular income, they should invest in the debt funds. These are the some of the popular debt schemes. These are just for the namesake in the sense, these are popular, these have given over a period of time, they have given good return. This is just symbolic, the table which I have presented. So, Edelweiss Banking and PSU debt fund, LNT triple ACE bond fund, these are the names of the schemes. ICIC Potential Credit Risk Fund, IDFC Dynamic Bond Fund, DSP Government Securities Fund, Canra Robeco Fund, IDFC Bond Fund Medium Term, right, and LNT Short Term Funds. On the right side, it is given category name, like the very first, if I just call it, Edelweiss Banking and PSU Debt Fund. So, it is a type of debt fund which invest in banking and PSU funds, means either it will be investing in the banks and the PSU companies, right. So, it is a it is a fund where the category is banking and PSU funds. 
similarly lnt triple a's bond funds so they will invest in corporate bond funds where where the investment will be only highly rated funds right highly rated triple a's triple a's means normally triple a rated funds so these are some of the schemes now friends after talking of the equity and the debt schemes let me tell you which this is very important while taking the decision uh, about the investment and the time horizon of the investment what is the tax implication of investing in the equity and the debt funds equity and the debt funds are being taxed differently so you should know while making a decision about making investment in the equity funds or the debt funds right depending on your risk profile you will be investing depending on the time horizon you will be investing but still tax implication tax aspect should also be considered especially those investors who are in the high tax bracket suppose i am taking a few examples so assuming that mr x invested rupees 10 lakh rupees in a equity fund on february 15 2019 and sold it for 13 lakh on may 25 2020 friends investment has been made on 15 february 19 and has been sold on may 25 what it means is more than a year so the profit is 3 lakh rupees purchase price is 10 lakh rupees the selling price is 13 lakh rupees in the equity funds or for that matter i would say in the equity whether it is a equity mutual fund or is a equity if you hold the security for more than 12 months the individual is entitled for long term capital gain means if you hold the equity or equity mutual funds for more than a year it will be treated as long term investment in the equity schemes friends not i am talking of the debt scheme i am purely talking of the equity schemes and the rate of tax for on individuals is 10% exceeding 1 lakh as applicable means if you make profit in the equity either in the equity pure equity by direct investment or in the equity equity funds through mutual funds if you make a long term capital gain of 1 lakh rupees it is exempted from tax right and any profit more than 1 lakh rupees is taxable at the rate of 10% so this gentleman mr x has made a gain of 3 lakh rupees so and out of i am presuming there is no other long term capital gain which this mr x has earned so he will be not be taxed on 3 lakh rupees that is 10 lakh is the purchase price selling price is 13 lakh so I made a profit of 3 lakh rupees out of this 3 lakh rupees 1 lakh is exempted from tax because it is a long term investment so he will be taxed at the rate of 10% on 2 lakh rupees so it tax will be 20000 rupees so this is the tax implication of the equity funds on individuals again i am telling you that the 1 lakh rupees exemption means 1 lakh rupees is not taxable in the case of long term uh, capital gain of equity schemes it may be for direct investment of equity or through mutual funds right so wherever you have invested in the equity whether through mutual fund or direct investing the long term capital gain is exempted up to 1 lakh rupees any profit that you earn in a particular year more than 1 lakh rupees will be taxable at 10% let me take some other case second case assuming mr x invested rupees 10 lakh in a equity fund on june 15 19 and sold it for 13 lakh on may 20 may 25 2020 right so what is the, in the previous case the investment was being held for more than a year in this case the investment is being held by mr x for less than a year he invested in month of june 2019 and sold it on 25th may 20 means less than one year so it is a short term since mr x sold it before 12 months the gain is short term and short term capital gain is taxed at the rate of 15% right so the rate of tax is 15 i mean depending on the financial year time to time the rate of tax changes so i am presuming that in this year 1920 the rate of tax is 15% so he will be taxed accordingly so 13 lakh is the is the is the uh, selling price 10 lakh is the purchase price 3 lakh is the 
profit right so on this 3 lakh the person will be taxed at 15% friends unlike in the long term capital gain where the tax was not on 3 lakh tax was on 2 lakh because 1 lakh is exempted from tax in the case of long term but in the short term not only the rate of tax is high but even the there is no exemption of the profit figure so on whole of this 3 lakh rupees mr x will have to pay tax so 15% of 3 lakh rupees comes to be 45000 right so in previous case when there was a long term profit he because mr x held the equity fund for more than a year the tax was 20000 rupees now in this case since mr x held this mutual fund equity mutual fund for less than a year on the same amount same selling price same buying price the tax is 45000 rupees so friends you can compare the tax liability of mr x if he helps the security for more than a year and if he helps the equity fund for more than a year right for more than a year the tax was only um, 20000 rupees here in this case because the equity fund is being held for less than a year the tax is 45000 rupees so 25000 rupees additional tax liability which mr x will have to bear now after talking of the tax implication on equity schemes let me talk of the tax implication of debt funds right that is if you invest in debt funds where the fund manager invest in debt funds debt so what is the tax implication the tax implication of on debt funds is different than that of the equity the rate of tax and the timing is also different right so assuming mr x invest rupees 1 lakh 10 lakh in in a debt fund in the financial year 2015-16 and sold it for 15 lakh uh, 1 lakh 50 thousand 1 lakh rupees investment and 1 lakh 50 thousand is the selling price in 1920 since mr x sold it after three years means he purchased in 15-16 and sold it in 1920 i have not given the exact date but but I am presuming that this date is after 3 years. So, sold it after 3 years. The gain is a long term. Unlike in the equity funds, let me be very clear. In the equity funds, if you held the equity fund for a more than a year, it is considered as a long term. But in case of debt funds, if you hold the debt for more than 3 years, then only it will come in the category of long term. This is the difference between debt funds and the equity funds. So, tax will be at the rate of 20 percent with the indexation as application the the cii in 16 was 254 and in 19 it was 289 friends let me tell you what this cii means every year government of india for that matter i will say the income tax department depending on the value of money because as you know the value of money has inverse relationship that of the the inflation that is the price index price index means the the wholesale prices or the or the the retail price on the base of that the index price index is being prepared on the basis of price index the income tax department prepares its cii right so if you hold the debt fund for more than 3 years it is considered as a long term with indexation benefit right indexation benefit and the rate of taxes unlike in the equity funds where the rate of tax was 10 percent and the time period was for one year to be considered as a long term capital gain in debt fund the time period is three years with indexation benefit and the rate of tax is not 10 percent the rate of tax is 20 percent so in 19 in 16 the cii was 254 and in 19 it was 289 so what we will do that this 10 lakh rupees 1 lakh rupees of investment will be i mean will be changed as per the cii because your index has changed so mr as a result mr x purchase price for a tax purposes will be raised to 289 which is the current cii in 2019 and 2254 was the cii when mr x purchased these bonds right so 289 divided by 254 into 1 lakh rupees that comes to be 1 lakh 13780 so for tax purposes 
the cost of the purchases will not be treated as 1 lakh the cost of the purchases will be treated as 1 lakh 13780 right so taxable income will be 1 lakh 50000 minus 1 lakh 13780 so on this amount of 36220 the 20% tax will be paid, will be paid or will be the liability of mr x so in, in this way friends you have seen how the debt funds are being taxed in the long term in the other case tax on debt fund if it is a it is a short term in the same example suppose mr x had invested rupees 1 lakh in the same debt funds on 5th january 18 and sold it for 1 lakh 50000 on april 2019 right since the holding period is less than 36 months unlike in the equity schemes the time period is not one year time period for the considered to be long term is 3 years so since the holding period is less than 36 months the gain of rupees 50000 right is short term capital gain and it will be included in the total income of the investor and will be taxed as per his tax slab what it means friends if you compare the debt funds and the equity fund the tax purposes i would say one is difference is the time period for equity it is one year for debt it is 3 years the rate of tax is also different in the case of equity is 10% in the case of debt for long term it is 20% in case of the short term the equity the tax is 15% here the whole of your income is taxable as per your tax slab supposing if i am in the 30% tax bracket which is the highest tax bracket in india so 30% tax bracket so this 50000 rupees if i am presuming mr x is in the 30% tax bracket so this 50000 rupees profit will be taxed at the rate of 30% supposing if it is in the he is in the 10% tax bracket then his income will be taxed as 10% means depending on a tax slab if you are a lower income person your income is not taxable at all right so you may not be taxed but if your income is taxable and depending on your tax slab your income will be taxed accordingly right so now uh, in the end i will be talking about the um, difference between equity and debt, debt funds right so equity funds the pooled money is invested in equity and equity linked instruments that is investment in equity in the debt funds the pooled money when i'm saying pooled money means as you know the very purpose or very term concept of mutual fund is that different investor pool their money right so the pooled money is invested in fixed income securities that is bonds money market instruments all those instruments which give you fixed income risk as we discussed earlier in the equity funds the level of risk is more as compared to the debt funds right so debt funds are less risky equity funds are more risky because why i am saying more risky because the price fluctuation in equity is larger than the price fluctuation in debt fund in normal situations tax liability i have discussed in length about the tax liability so short term capital gain if holding period is <coughs> up to 12 months is taxed at the rate of 15% Uh, long term capital gain is exempt up to 1 lakh rupees and exceeding 1 lakh rupees is tax at the rate of 10% in the in the debt fund short term capital gain the holding period for considering short term is less than 36 months is taxed as per your tax slabs right and long term is taxed at the rate of 20% return equity funds can give good returns over a long period means in the long period normally the equity schemes gives higher return as compared to the debt fund debt funds gives a steady return in a constant it means because it is a fixed income securities so it gives you a fixed return return when i use the word fixed not exactly same means level of fluctuation is less market condition i mean equity funds are suitable when market is booming right so suitable when market is volatile so these are the difference between equity funds and debt funds friends in my next lecture also i'll be talking of the different schemes which are being offered by the mutual fund and i'll be talking on some other issues of the mutual funds thank you very much